What's up everybody? So in this video, you're gonna to get to uh, kind of get a behind the scenes look at our company meetings that we do here in our office uh, bi-weekly. Um, it's a lunch and we're always going through a book and we're going through the four agreements right now for the second time. Um, incredible book. And today I think we were talking about chapter four, which is the third agreement. And so you just get a look at what we, um, how we go about getting everybody in the office involved in this growth oriented culture uh, as they each go and tell you what they've learned or kind of what their thoughts were on that chapter and uh, you learn a lot by seeing what other people are learning from the very same thing uh, that, that you're going through and uh, I was I was uh, pleasantly surprised with the conversations that arise and uh, glad you guys get to check it out here today so we do a personal growth side of the meeting and then we also do a um, Everybody, and we used to do it in this group, but we've just gotten too big, where everybody had to bring an idea that would impact the bottom line of the business every two weeks we do this meeting. And so, right, not every week, right? I feel like it's every week. But, um, so everybody was responsible for thinking about the bottom line. Like, how do we get this better and better and better and better? Because, just because, somebody has a certain role, like she may be business manager, I may be CEO, but I want to hear what Sarah thinks. I want to hear how she sees things and then in her role or role she knows of, what is her mind to come up with that can help us be better? We want everybody to be invested mentally, emotionally, and, and obviously we all want physically. Um, so anyway, that's how the meeting would, would roll. And we got so big, so we cut it down to an hour, we eat in 30 minutes, and, and then we, we always do the personal growth side where we're actually going through the four agreements right now and talking about each agreement and the whole crew is reading it. Because just like just like I talked about on the webinars, like no, you're never gonna go beyond where you are personally. Like your 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 money, your life, your relationships, however you are on the inside is is you're going to be stuck there unless you're growing, right, and changing. Things on the outside aren't going to change unless you're changing on the inside. And so we, we have taken that on ourselves to grow in that fashion as well. Um, and I think everybody's on board with that now, excited, right? Yeah. In the beginning, not so much. I don't think, we, I don't think people wanted to read. But that would be It's good, right? You good with reading now? Growing personally? All right, this is one of my favorite ones. I mean, you, you guys know the old saying, don't assume, right? Because you make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> but, um, but making assumptions is, is literally just unbelievable cancer. And I get caught up that's probably the worst one for me. Um, that, I, that I assume that someone's thinking a certain thing or doing a certain thing and, and and I create this scenario in my head based off of the assumption I agreed with, right? Not even knowing the truth, instead of just, just hitting head on and figuring out what's true, what's not true, and then and going down the road. You make these assumptions and then you create this whole drama around it that literally consumes all of your thinking in your mind. But um, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy when you actually look at it, but it's one of the biggest cancers. But um, I'm gonna go this way, and we go real fast on this one. And yeah, we'll just go real quick. We got 15 minutes. The thing that stuck out the most to me, it's just the simple truth that the way to prevent this is by asking questions. Like, it's just such a simple truth. And so, and I remember reading this 10 years ago, and then again two years ago, and, and that has become more of a habit in my life. So when I feel an assumption happening, I ask the question. I mean, it annoys people because I'm always like, okay, did you mean this? Or Yeah, but I'm always surprised. She's like, did you, did you mean to like, that you were going to murder me in the back of your truck and not me and let a bunch of hogs eat me? I'm like, where'd that come from? <laughs> I guess you said it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, one of the parts that I liked and is just something to gosh, constantly remind me of is often we make the assumption that our partners know what we think and that we don't have to say what we want. We assume they're going to do what we want because they know us so well. And, and everyone falls into that, like, well, you know me, you love me, you know me, and so I shouldn't have to say this because you already know it. And so that's where those assumptions can really grow if you don't ask the questions and say things and really say and have open dialogue and communicate because that's the only way you're going to get past it. Um, I, I like this uh, chapter because um, in not making assumptions uh, forces communication. So I really like that. It forces you to communicate with other people. But when I read the book two years ago, um, it changed the way I looked at things and the way that I judged or don't judge people. Um, of course, everybody does it, but the way that I would make assumptions or judge someone by something has dropped dramatically because of this book and just forces communication to know what's real and not. Yeah, uh, what you guys just said were some of the key things, uh, especially in, uh, as far as communicating with your spouse exactly how you, exactly like what you want, how you feel, and that goes back to just like intentionality, like you can't expect, um, and, and it, it helps it, it helps arguments down the road, it helps that little tap that becomes a punch, that becomes a ripping your arm off, um, because you think they know that you weren't supposed to do that thing. Um, but the, the other key thing was what you meant said was um, asking questions. So I used to think I was so annoying because I would, when somebody would say something that was very probably clear for everyone else, I would say, what do you mean? Because I really wanted to make sure that I knew like what they mean, but this helped to reinforce that, no, it's important because I, I want to make sure that my understanding of what you said is your understanding. And so, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, I thought I struggled worse with the taking things personally, but then I read this chapter and I was like, oh, I Take that back. Yeah. Um, I'm just a super shy kind of person, so asking questions is uncomfortable, and so I do make a lot of assumptions, so I'm just trying to work on asking more questions. I agree with Emily. Um, the second chapter was like, oh no, this is me. And then the third one I was like, okay, this is also me. <laughs> on this. Um, but I wrote down too, the key to avoiding assumptions is just to ask questions. That way you don't have to assume, but rather you just know the truth. So that's probably the biggest takeaway for me too. Um, I think the biggest takeaway was where you were talking about um, just not to assume what other people are thinking, how likely they're to assume. Um, and just to communicate with them. Because otherwise, like, it's going to cause problems. Especially like if you assume that someone's thinking something like about you, when it's like, no, oh, they're probably not. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they are. And if they are, you find out by asking questions. Sure. Like, like you're ready to think of them. Um, I'm always just trying to do better at not assuming and catching myself in the act and then trying to always keep an open mind about it. I think one of one things that I really struggle with is um, when I have when I feel obligated to do something, and I'm the whole whole time I'm assuming this is gonna be awful, it's gonna be boring. I hate this. I just want this over with. But every time I go, I have fun. <laughs> so I try to remember that. So next time I'm assuming this, I'm like actually, you know, what, it's probably gonna be great. So stop that. And I have done that. Asked a lot of questions to just try and make clarity, especially with being here and people that I'm meeting new and starting that relationship with, I'm really trying to push that, so, yeah. Sorry, I'm making a video. <laughs> so, um, so uh, uh, just the other day, I was talking to someone about uh, making assumptions and something called recontextualization. So like, you, have, you always have a, like your assumptions, make the context within which everything that you know is true plays within. And I was making the point that like, a lot of people talk about like the facts, they'll be like, this is just the facts of life, man. Why don't you accept reality, man? Like these are just the facts right here. That's what everybody assumes. But it's like, more important than the facts is actually the context, you know, those assumptions. And as soon as you switch around the assumptions, you can take the exact same fact, and now it just has completely different meaning just you didn't change any fact it's just the context from which you approached it um which is what he's talking about he's yeah. talking about the construct of hell on earth and that's the that's the 
what you're talking about there. Or it could be heaven, or it could be what well, yeah. you know, It doesn't change the facts. The facts just play differently in each one. Yeah, exactly. And you know, as like when I make when I make my you know the videos and stuff like that, the context of, or the the like one smile or something like that, everything that built, leads up to that builds up certain assumptions, and then just like. You know, maybe the scene I changed before it, or like the reaction that I put, it can make it completely different. So it's just fascinating to me to consider that. It's like, it's not like you might say with yourself, oh man, I know the facts, but it's like really consider that context, really consider those assumptions. And when I read through this chapter, it, it, it reminded me of that a lot. So, um, yeah, I think about this a lot because I think as I struggle with it a lot, but. I feel like sometimes I get to a place in life and I'm like, I don't want to have any opinions. And I feel like it's something along the lines of like, I feel like we're always trying to find some like solid ground to like stand on. So I feel like in all that, it's like these tiny little judgments, making all these tiny little judgments to like, uh, to have some kind of control over something. And I, and this is an interesting point guys, but I, I hope it doesn't drive you crazy that I always bring something back to the Bible, but they're just things that I like, I'm always like chewing on. But I'm like, it's so interesting how he was like, don't eat from the tree of good and evil, but eat from the tree of life. And I feel like the tree of good and evil is just us constantly trying to figure out what, like, where is my ground? Where do I stand on? And I don't know. I haven't made sense of it all. It just feels like it's, um, there's like nothing, um, I don't know. I guess I'm like, okay, well then how do I live? What do I do? And I'm like. I think it just goes back to the questions. I'm like, maybe I just ask questions. Maybe I just try to learn everything I can. Maybe I just try to understand and stop like trying to be understood or something. I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about it though. I love your video. It's very hard for a um, so uh, what I love too about these books that we read is just the conversations that you have with your loved ones. You know, it inspires your ideas and you to thought. Now, as I was reading this a while ago, we got to the part where it talks about when you're married and you make the assumptions that your spouse and my spouse was sitting next to me and inspired this really big conversation about how I make assumptions like all the time and how I spend my energy doing that instead of asking the question to clarify. So it's been a really interesting journey, like kind of just thinking about where my energy is going towards. I think it's like something like 40% of like your mental energy takes away your physical energy or something like that. And it's just, I don't really spend a lot of time asking those questions. I just assume at face value that what you say is what you need and working on not doing that. I think us as women do it a lot more than men do. I feel like men are a lot more straightforward, but um, that's just me. They're just, I feel like guys are just, they are what they are, but then women just want to like make it a bigger thing than it is, but I don't know, maybe it's just, that's just how I feel about it. But, um, I have read this book before, and this has actually helped me a lot with just my personal relationships with with my or with my family and stuff. And I always, I mean, growing up, I feel like I've always thought like, oh, this person thinks the worst of me. And that's just how it is. Like it's just because that's who you see as yourself. Like that's just it's through your own blinders. But. Um, I guess I've just lately been trying to look more to the heart of people rather than the outside of what we see. And I feel like I've learned that a little bit more from Amanda because I feel like she says that a lot. She says that I love your heart like all the time, like to everybody. So I um, say that. You do say that. That's <laughs> good. You do. She has never said that. I think <laughs> When you said that, I was like, I have never heard of that. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't threaten her that you're going to kill her, you know? <laughs> She's so scared. In so many words. Like, she is so um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, I feel like we do spend a lot of energy just in our own heads, and I know I do it myself, and this book, you know, reading it again, does help you bring it back to, like, just asking questions rather than assuming. So. Awesome. Um, this part of the book, I think I've taken just really, the whole book is personal, but when you think of assumptions, you think about like, uh, you're assuming something about something else rather than yourself, but part of the book where it talks about what we've learned to assume about ourselves and certain experiences, um, I'm reminded by this book to always 
just go into a situation with no prejudice whatsoever, whatever it may be. Like, I've been bad in the past to assume that I'm either going to suck at something, and so I will maybe not want to do it, or I'm really good at that, so then I want to go and do it. So for me to really just look at a situation like if I'm going to travel here or go on this vacation, well, I can assume I've went to the beach before. I'm going to assume this may be what this vacation is going to be like, where I can completely live in the moment and try not to assume the way that it's going to be and just let it unfold the way that it's going to. And that has brought so much fulfillment rather than creating like an expectation on the trip or the interaction with an individual because I'm assuming that it's going to be this way because it was last time or it's going to be that way because of myself, whatever condition I may be in at the time. Um, and it just, for me, I like uncertainty and going into situations like that, not assuming something really makes it quite colorful and creative. So that's, that's what I really got out of that part. I wasn't at that part. Uh, I have actually read this book three times, the first time you ever brought it up. And for me, this has been a self-help book. It's changed a lot of things. It's, it showed me how to shut my mouth and listen and ask questions and learn, instead of just assuming that this is all BS, you know? And you do have to sit back and listen, but it has been a self-help, I mean, even uh, assuming your spouse, you know, just assuming, well, she knows about it. She has to hear it. Women have to hear it. I mean, we don't have to hear it. They have to hear it. I have to hear it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the overall, this book has it, been a great change in my life and uh, my experiences and my business. It's helped a lot. Thank you. Good book. Yeah. Um, there's an interesting quote in the book that's very true in our quote, but just a paragraph that talks about how we have um, a million unanswered questions that go through our head every day. And the reason that we assume is because in order for us to feel safe and not embracing discomfort, but to feel safe, we have to answer those questions. So instead of just leaving them unanswered until we get a chance to ask the person or whatever, or figure out the fact, are, we just naturally answer them because it makes us feel safe in that in that environment. And so I think it's awesome that Joseph started this whole really culture of discomfort um, because it's <laughs> culture, cult of just discomfort. <laughs> because it's really it's really like every time something that I realize like that I'm comfortable in whatever, like I I go okay, I'm gonna. I was telling somebody the other day, um, basically, they were telling me how they were trying to do keto and blah, 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 but they weren't doing it. And I was like, that's cool if that's what you want to do. He was telling me how eventually I'll get to wherever you want. And I was like, well, the fact that you want to be comfortable where you're at is going to make you complacent in every decision that you're making. I think we're going to do a new, on the new opportunity video, Jill, we should just say, come join our uncomfortable culture. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the way, the way I kind of, the thoughts that I have just now, um, have to do with, we put out so much content on social media, and you want to find out just a breeding ground for assumptions, good lord. <laughs> like the comment sections of social media, it's, it's all it is, it's just, it's just one gigantic assumption, and I've been calling people out lately, I've literally in the last week I've probably written four or five comments replying back to people like holy assumptions like good yeah. gracious like stuff that just the craziest thing but the point I'm getting at there and the point that I've taken out of this uh, book in this chapter I guess so it was Mark Twain that said if if you always tell the truth you never have to worry about what you say right and Sean Whalen talks a lot about so We've been working a lot on this living in truth and what it means to live in truth. And I think part of living in truth is being able to eliminate the assumptions for other people. Because if you're constantly bringing truth to the conversation, then you don't leave things up to the other person's interpretation, the other person's imagination 
to figure out what's really going on. Like if you're constantly like living out truth, then they understand, like they know what you're trying to do. So in the context of like where I started with putting content on social media, I'm starting to think now of like, okay, yeah, today's episode 157 of the Daily Bread vlog. Well, what if it's someone's first time ever seeing it? Do they understand the truth and what we're trying to get out in every one of these episodes that was really established in the first few episodes? Are they understanding that, seeing episode 157 as the first, or are we forcing them to make these gigantic assumptions? Because they don't know, because they don't know what we're really trying to do. And so it's just trying to constantly keep, uh, I think, these core principles and these truths that that I want to live and that I want to put out there to the world, like front and center, so that that at least can eliminate the assumptions of what their purpose for doing this stuff is. Like, why is this guy putting out this video? Oh, well, I just watched it. Like, that's what the main thing was about. Like, keeping it around those core uh, principles so that people don't have to make assumptions. Because I think a lot of what we're doing is we're forcing assumptions just by putting out so much content. There's no way people can keep up with it. So, yeah, it's good. This is a great one for me. Um, just the uh, part where it says all the sadness and drama you've lived in your life was rooted in making assumptions and taking things personally. Um, I think most of the things, not only do they not matter five years from now, but a lot of them don't matter two days from now. But people create drama around all of that. Um, and I can make assumptions extremely quickly and even make wrong decisions based on those assumptions and so this is really this is really a thing where um, sitting back for a minute before you actually put all that stuff through your brain and, and think about it, even five seconds makes a huge difference before you actually decide something you know and making it so that it's going to be the best for the for the person and not for an agenda or something like that, and wrapped around all the drama it can be terrible, and um, the wrong things can be done and uh, thought of, and the thoughts are way worse than just a simple action, really, because that simmers in your brain for the next day, two days, three days, thinking that somebody thought this or that when it really had nothing to do with anything, and you find out the real truth, and it's and it's good. And um, so this is this is a great the whole book's incredible, but that was that was something that I just really uh, really liked and thought about. So that's awesome. And we are finished. Any other announcements or